hey, unplanned couple week break in the schedule there. Not planned, it just kind of happened, like I said, though fortunately not for the reviews this time, and now that, for better or worse, the machine is turning back on, we're likely to see more of those as well. There'll be discussion for what's been happening in the near future, but for most recently, to be honest, it's been a matter of stuff I wanted to do shows about kept not actually ending. Like, I've been working on the follow-up, I promise, to the, hey, kind of looks like I predicted what was going to happen to the Warner DC movies, except the part about everything getting delayed and blown apart into even worse uncertainty by a viral pandemic and all the terrible decisions made between Man of Steel and now basically destroying the studio so much that the AT&T merger didn't hold together and the studio got sold off for scrap to Discovery. Oops. And that episode is coming. Problem is, every time my charts and outlines for what I think it all looks like now get settled, they either announce another movie, announce the already existing movies are getting delayed again, or, like, the key still employed at the studio, Justice League actor, who's actually central to the project that they're using to kickstart the whole let's try this again approach, gets locked up on an assault charge. Again. Speaking of which, I kept wanting to cover this stupid Oscar fan favorite Twitter poll thing in more depth right up until it happened as well, and then it did happen and played out pretty much what I would have said was going to happen, honestly, a colossal embarrassment, the type of which is all but guaranteed when anyone incorporates the phrase, let's let the internet vote on it into literally anything. Please proceed immediately to an assembly in the Butthead Memorial Auditorium. Damn it, I wish we hadn't let the students name that one. And just so we're all clear, you realize what happened there with the Oscar fan favorite and Oscar cheerworthy moment thing, right? Like, even if you were voting for what came out on top, you recognize that it working out like it did is an utter shit show and hugely embarrassing. Like, we all understand that the longer, more pretentious HBO Max streaming version of a movie that flopped and nobody liked the first time, getting revealed as the Twitter pick for cheerworthy, whatever that means, out of what was already not a great lineup of selections, followed by a pretty cool horror movie that people sort of remember maybe be watching on Netflix earlier in the year winning fan favorite, because for that one you weren't allowed to vote for Justice League, followed closely by a widely panned Cinderella movie whose pop singer has a big fan base, and Minimata, which nobody watched or had even heard of, but people jumped behind to make some kind of statement about Johnny Depp. You get that this was humiliating for everyone involved, setting aside the fact that the cheerworthy thing, really just those couple of things from movies that mostly came out within the last 20 years, like no Death Star explosion, no Hills Are Alive, no king of the world, none of those. That doesn't make sense. The point is, entering the Speed Force is now a punchline. It's inherently funny because the reaction of anyone whose brain isn't internet poisoned enough to care about the nerd versus geek internecine fandom war over the Snyder Cut who happened to be watching that likely reacted with some version of, huh? And what the hell is a Speed Force? That's why its immediate legacy was turning into an opening monologue reference for the normiest of normie late night talk show host monologue. Obviously what everyone would rather be talking about right now instead of politics is the big moment from last night's Oscars. You all know what I'm talking about, of course, that instantly iconic and unforgettable moment when the Flash entered the Speed Force. <laughs> We all saw Oscar's history unfold live before our eyes when that famous scene finally got the recognition it deserved. And clearly, that's what everyone is talking about today. Did you see Nicole Kidman's reaction? <laughs> that was either her face finding out the Flash had entered the Speed Force or when she discovered her mysterious British husband was indeed the murderer. I mean, to be honest, I think it's kind of great. I mean, the movie and the movement both still suck, and I really hope Zack Snyder sticks to his guns and just moves on and makes Rebel Moon and whatever else he wants to do, maybe another zombie movie, and just never tries to come back to this thing he never should have been doing to begin with. But the fact that Disney, ABC, and the Academy basically tried to bootstrap and engineer a big moment where the Spider-Man movie would get something like an Oscar win after it didn't get the nomination they wanted by doing a Twitter poll and assuming, well, hey, it's an audience popularity contest, clearly the biggest movie, which we made, will win that, only to have the internet do what it does with every open poll, get brigaded by goons and weirdos who mass vote for something stupid, either to make a point or because the internet has weird and terrible taste. Yeah, that's pretty great, especially if it means that Oscar decides, well, we're never doing this stupid thing again. But that's the sad thing. The person at ABC Disney who gets in trouble for letting this happen probably won't be any of the executives who forced it through. It'll be one of the poor mid-level people in digital who's been trying in vain to convince them not to do this by explaining Bodie McBoatface from months and wasn't listened to. And then it didn't matter because all anyone will remember is Will Smith smacking Chris Rock so hard he knocked all of these people's brains clear out of their heads. <laughs> oh, wow! What the actual what? 
but yeah, anyway, the DCEU episode is being worked on, and it'll come out when it comes out. Speaking of which, I also had things written, like, twice for the Disney vs. Florida thing, and even that keeps changing. Just a day and a half ago, as of this typing right now, they finally put out a statement, which I think is their fifth change of position here, or maybe the first time they actually took a position. Maybe that's the same thing, which is frustrating on this end, because that's actually an interesting story, kind of. At the very least, the you usually don't get to see major media companies publicly faceplant and eat shit this much aspect of it. Well, usually not Disney, anyway. Warner Brothers has been kicking itself in the balls in front of the world since Man of Steel. Yeah! But between the Twitter Oscar stunt going awry and now this, they're having the kind of last few months you usually just don't get to have publicity-wise unless it won't actually matter because you're Disney and you've still got Doctor Strange 2, Thor 4, Black Panther 2, Avatar 2, Lightyear, a ton of streaming content, and all the parks opening back up for tourist season, so you're pretty much bulletproof. And I probably will do a longer thing on this because it's fascinating, but also maybe more of a serious business piece. But just in general, if you're young enough to have only experienced big media companies being run by guys who only know or have teams of people whose job is to tell them how to do public relations in a 24-7 social media world. This thing with Bob Chapek, the new Disney CEO as of last year, just getting openly rebelled against by basically his whole company from the department heads down to the park employees and just the fans, and having to get frog-walked by the shareholders out in front of everybody to eat shit and apologize and now have the fans and the fascists and the Florida GOP and Fox News hate his guts forever while the whole rest of the company saves face is just the kind of thing that's not supposed to happen anymore. I'm not your buddy, you green Greedy old reptile. Nobody loves you. Nobody loves you. You're old and you're ugly. Nobody loves you. See, what was happening with that evil fucking Florida don't say gay bill is that Disney, like every other company of their size and type that does business anywhere, always cynically gives money to every politician in power on either side in order to get favors and make deals regardless of their public face, and Disney's public face from the 80s to the 90s always has been performatively center-left mildly progressive because their audience is kids and teenagers who are usually more progressive than their parents, and because it fits their whole long-term planning strategy mindset thing because those kids are going to grow up and have kids of their own so forward but not too forward means you're always just right for most adults and cool enough for each new generation of youngsters. I mean, that's Disney's whole game. That's their thing that they do. But underneath, however progressive they look, they always still just another company that wants their taxes low, unions to not have too much power, and regulations to stay out of their way, and their money goes to whichever party will make that happen, which in America means both parties, actually. It's kind of our whole problem. <laughs> but that's another show, so having political donations on record with politicians who end up later voting for awful stuff like this bill, even though any of the media you eventually put out you'll be on the other side of, that's always been Disney's standard operating procedure under every boss before this guy. And when questions came up, the response always was in some form of, well, obviously we're against that, and if someone points out a donation hypocrisy, well, hey, we donate to lots of people, free country, what's important here is the donations weren't because of that specific bad thing, which is, you know, weaselly as hell, but not technically a lie? You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. But Chapek, who apparently is or was of the mindset that the company is perceived as too liberal is bad for business, which if you know anything about who actually has money to spend in this country in the 21st century vis-a-vis -vis consumer demographics is just frighteningly uninformed as a take from someone whose job is to be informed about those things. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, religious conservatives, yeah, movies and TV and books and the culture, didn't go woke and liberal because George Soros or Klaus Schwab have a lot of money. Have you ever folded a one dollar bill? Look, you can make it say boobs! What does it mean? Culture went woke because you don't. He's out of line, but he's right. But yeah, so Chapek decides he wants to be the apolitical Disney CEO instead of the traditional Disney thing of actually do nothing either way but then seem to be generally on the right side if people ask. He fires off this intercompany statement preemptively about officially not taking a position even though they're one of the biggest employers and taxpayers in the state and how the studio's inspiring content is their contribution to progress and for good reason people lost their shit about how offensively stupid and dismissive a thing this was to say and we've all seen what happened next. Enough immediate blowback from people inside and outside the company that the department heads and whole divisions underneath him basically started putting out their own stronger statements of, uh, actually, no, we're way on the other side of this, regardless of what our dick boss says. Nobody loves you. Good heaven, Smithers. They're not afraid of me anymore. <laughs> Eventually, the shareholders clearly had some words with him, likely about the whole who actually spends money thing that I just explained, and he had to not only walk it back, but the company had to cut off all political donations to save face. I'm sure they did not want to do that. 
They'll pay for this. Because now people are paying attention, and now Florida's shitty Republican Governor DeSantis is acting like he's in a culture war against Mickey Mouse. Since he's only doing this evil shit in the first place because he wants to run for president, and he thinks this is how he out-trumps Trump. So by trying, for the stupidest reasons, to be the not-as-political CEO of Disney, Chapek, this big dummy not only made himself look in front of the whole business world like the weakest most uncoordinated disney boss in decades hey mr burns did you get that letter i sent letter i don't recall any That's letter because i forgot to stamp it <laughs> <laughs> oh that kid slays me that was no accident let's get out of here you can't keep his house in order and now has led the company into the exact political fight he didn't want to have it's all on him he's now the face of both disney not doing enough against this bill and disney Disney doing anything against this bill for people to be mad at from either angle. So whatever happens, he gets to eat all the shit and get zero credit. Not that he deserves any. Even now that amidst all this fallout, the gates have come down and divisions are feeling emboldened to do things like restore a lesbian subplot to Lightyear that apparently got cut out before all this because, again, now people are paying much closer attention. And all he would have had to do to avoid this is say nothing about anything and just hang up the fucking rainbow flags in the park in June like every other boss before him did every other year and everything would have gone pretty smoothly. In Instead, we get the spectacle of a gigantic media corporation basically getting forced to do the right things, several of the right things, because the guy they put in charge was too stupid to do the wrong thing with subtlety. So I guess the lesson is maybe sometimes the system does work? I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.